my dad, when it comes, this is Suey Week, by the way, to the listening audience. And Welcome to my, Suey Week. My dad tries to act like he's being like a, a kind father, like, hey, how you doing with this Suey? Is everything good? What do you, like, can I help? And, it, and all he's really asking, is there a back in my day category? <laughs> yep. Well, and, there and, hasn't always been. And it is just, he, he, he reaches out with the intent. He wants me to think he's reaching out for me, but it's like, hey, just wanted to make sure that back in my day is happening. It is, did you get this back in my day? What about that one? I mean, he says he wants to check in and it's not like they've always happened. That's not my phone. I think Ooh. that's Greg Cody's phone. I think it was yours. Yeah, I don't have a phone. Still a 50 from last week. My phone's uh, off. It's on silent. Mm. Are you? Uh, Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, it is now. It's not it is now. It's not it now. It's not my phone. Right in front of me. Not my phone. Congratulations. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. before then, the dial was turned down. Five dollars, right. yeah. please. Uh, I don't have five dollars. I'm a working man. Six dollars. <laughs> put, put, put Greg Cody down for I'm six. Not a high-powered executive. Six dollar IOU. Uh, you say there haven't always been in the Sueys a back in my day, and there haven't always been a back in my day. Uh, part of the problem. It's a dying breed. Do you have one today? No, no. I had ah, one last week. It's Tuesday, though. right? But it's it's not your regular Tuesday. It's a yeah. Tuesday that starts the week. It's like a Monday. It feels you know? like a yeah. Monday. That's yeah. exactly right. It's a holiday week. Yes. It's Suey week. There's, totally fair. There's yeah. too much going on. You know, it's, it's just, what's going on? There's a lot. It's the busiest week of the year for Greg Cody. Biggest yep. work well, week of the year. Football. He says this. He says this is the yes. Football is here. Um, Joe Flacco's kids are making fun of him because they think he sucks because he plays for the Jets. Yeah. And they're right. Like he goes out there and tries to like teach them baseball techniques and things about athletics. And he is saying that they come to him and say, what do you know? You play for the Jets. You suck. He has to go to YouTube and show him his Ravens videos. Of him winning a Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> That's because, great. Be, because they think he sucks because he plays for the Jets. Right. Well, now the Jets are saying that Zach Wilson might be able to play, which is interesting. Because, Dan, listen, you don't want to give away that you're starting Joe Flacco. So you give the hint, the illusion that maybe it's going to be Zach Wilson. You don't want a team to have seven days to prepare for Joe. We we will get to the fact that Belichick, suck. Belichick is in town five days early today to prepare for oh, the heat. Oh, shit. Uh, I, the I, Dolphins. I think this is funny, though, because we will get out there and we will criticize whoever it is has done a wrong thing this Sunday. But I will go outside today and be like, how does anyone move in this swamp weather? Like how, so how, bad right now. So man. bad. How, like how they're here five days early. The Patriots are here five days early because there's no way by the fourth quarter of playing in this, any human body, no matter how strong, is gonna be unbelievably under duress because I can't, and I know you're gonna make fun of me, but you can't walk from one place to the other around here without being drenched in sweat. Yeah, I mean, the Utah players couldn't last a quarter without throwing up against the University of Florida. Now, they ended up surviving the full four quarters. is a great game, but I have to imagine that the home field of the University of Florida playing at home in those conditions is part of the reason why they beat Utah. I think Utah is a better team, but the conditions, the, the Dolphins historically have had a September advantage at home. I will say, though, from Bill Belichick, perhaps a dangerous game, bringing your team to Miami for five days on the eve of the season. I feel like there could be some chicanery and some South Beach flu that happens. I mean, if, if, you're, <laughs> if you're partying the week before week one, you're just, you have a problem. Like, I think the Patriots, maybe for week one, they can just be like, all right, we're going on a business trip. I don't think this is like basketball. Patriot Way shuts down, and yeah, it it's does. just like, it's a military academy, moves from Foxborough to wherever it is that they put it down here, and for five days, it's just clamped down maybe the first night they get to do something maybe maybe, maybe. belichick don't abide no shenanigans come on little dinner maybe early dinner though i am on the record uh that the dolphins will win 40 to 14 i got carried away that one day we all did uh greg cody said they're gonna win the super bowl stugatz agreed they rushed to the take I stand by it. I do, too. Yeah. ESPN rankings have the Dolphins number 19. <laughs> it's obscene. It's ridiculous. What are you laughing yeah, at? I mean, because so the over-under on wins in Vegas is like eight and a half. Damn so, right. Yeah. Vegas takes the over. Wrong before. Okay. And, yeah. you, and you guys, based on nothing. Like, based on... Guts. Yeah. 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 Okay, based on... A feeling. Based guts on and guile. Guts and a feeling. <laughs> Dad, you thought the, the Super Bowl. Dad, you thought the Dolphins were going to be good the last couple of years, too, though. So it's like, and they had a winning record the past couple of years. They were good.
That's what a winning record means. You're a good team. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're a great team. Mm -hmm. it means you're a good team. They're a good team. Now they're going to be even better. Playoff better. In the hunt better. Making some noise better. <laughs> wow. The Dolphins the are back. Escalating. Wait a minute. Here we go. Jack, the, wait good a leads minute. to great. Wait, wait, yeah, right. I want to Gotta get be good first. Yeah. I want to get to Chris Cody <laughs> and how awful this week with the Sueys is. But I am already tired one week in of you say the Dolphins are back. They have not even played an, an FSU receiver. It's telling you because of a blocked extra point, FSU is now back. I know Mike Ryan is dying to tell us that if he were not on vacation, he'd be dying to tell us that $43,000 or 43,000 fans at a half empty stadium is the University of Miami is back putting 70 <laughs> on the 56,000, Dan. That was my oh, favorite. Get out of here. It was 56,000 announced for that yeah. game. I was there. I counted every one of them. Yeah. What? What'd you count? What? You Fifty-six thousand. Really? It was legit. You, uh, you went. That, was that just to tell us that you were there? I was. The, I don't know if anybody else in the room went to that game. No. Uh, maybe not. But it was to just tell I us that you eyewitness. were there. But you didn't count. Yes. Okay, uh, Chris Cody, did you get into it with Mike Ryan? Because Mike he Ryan... left the group chat. <laughs> Right. I, that was my favorite part of the weekend. I started a group <laughs> chat with Witty, Stugatz, Dan, and Mike of just a picture of the because Mike was just like at least the lower bowl at at, at start they're gonna this crowd is gonna show up for Mario Cristobal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They it will welcome full. him. It was full, dude. We are okay. We are stand Stop like it, you have a standard here that you expect, and maybe it was above that. Maybe it was a little more crowded than a normal Bethune Cookman game would be, dude. Most college atmospheres are like. The first week, a ranked team are like completely packed at Did the you start see of the games. opening. Like how Ole Miss's stadium looked to kick off. All right, like, you can maybe handpick little examples. I'm just saying there are like, come on, we can't deny it. It was not. It was a little sad him jogging out there. Unfortunately, Mike Ryan is not here to defend himself. This is an annual tradition. Susan Miller Degnan tweeting out a half empty, uh, yes. a half empty stadium, <laughs> and and the U you begins. Can set your you can uh, set your watches uh, no, to that it, picture. It, no, and it's been 20 years, and it's just <laughs> it is it's sad. Well, it's, you can set your watches to you guys trying to make it a bigger deal than see, it was. That's the I thing. mean, you're annoying. It's actually not that sad. <laughs> it's not that sad. Wasn't that? It's Bethune Cookman. It's I get it. It's not it's a huge game. Than hell. Right. It's hotter than hell. There's but Mike Ryan, he came in the day before know, and was like, the thing. You'll see. Sell out. It's yes. different now. It does. He yeah. thought he was like Mike was painting a picture like it was gonna be like Notre Dame before Chris, Bethune Cookman. It, it, but it is different. <laughs> Fifteen thousand more people in this market means something. Like this market stinks for that stuff. And and we are very small about You've made an investment in something in Miami. We will come support it with commensurate investment. Not so much. We wait around. It'll fill up. If they're winning, it'll fill up. But it's it's not going to happen for Bethune-Cookman because you want to stir echoes from 20 years ago because Mario was an offensive lineman on one of the championship teams. Like you can throw $100 million, you can throw $100 million at that and contracts and tell us you're getting in the game and 8,000 more people will show up than did the last time. Right. You want a bad UM crowd? Come this coming Saturday. I'll be there for Southern Miss with a noon start. That's right. That's oh, death. Boy. A noon start is death. The crowd will be twenty five thousand. So in in context, fifty six thousand for Bethune Cookman, a predictably awful game. I thought was pretty. Good. I wish we could have Mario Cristobal's genuine thoughts in his head. When he starts running out there right now, do you think he's having a goosebumps moment of like this is everything yes, I want it to be, no, yes, or he's no. thinking, "Wow, section one thirty eight is a little low, a little light." You cannot have a goosebump moment against Bethune Cookman, Dan. No, okay. that's There's not no true. Way. That's no. Not true. I'm sorry. sorry. No, 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 no. I think he has no. the mo the goosebumps as he's like emerging, and then as soon as he looks up and sees the crowd, it's like, okay, I was expecting a little more. I listened to Mike Ryan's vocal <laughs> yesterday. He told me it was going to be much better yes, than this. He said it's going to be. Better. We have the echo. Uh, Stu Gutz, let's talk about this for a second because in your removal in Parkland and distance from these things, yes. like the emotion of Cuban American coming to lead Miami at a time that Miami has announced it's getting back in the big business of football. They might not be back, but they're spending like they are. Mm -hmm. And they've never done that before. And for him to lead that would, of course, be emotional for him after, and incidentally, 
uh, before you get too cynical and mocking, uh, as he tends to the health of his parents in this market. He came to Miami because Miami means something to him. So being a part of the first step and it feeling perhaps a little bit less dead than it has for the last 20 years, I'm not going to be cynical about saying that wasn't emotional for him because it was Bethune Cook. Right. I okay. agree. All right. Totally. That's fair. I mean, it is his his first co- you know his first game as the head coach at the University of Miami. So I I take back what I said. I think you're right. I stand corrected. That must have been a goosebump moment for him. But he did look up at 134 and well, was like, this, "What the hell, man?" Both things can be true. <laughs> both things can be true. I, I, I don't it, that it was imperfect. Yes, perhaps he imagined 80,000 people there, 90,000 people there. Uh, he coached his ass off on the sidelines. He was mad on an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and everyone enjoys that he was uh, that he was yelling at the team and and disciplining them. But Greg Cody, you were there. I was an eyewitness. Mm-hmm. The feel of that place when it is half empty or like that, it uh, it might not be sad, but it doesn't feel like big college football all over the country. No, it doesn't. It was half a big college football game against an FCS-level team in Bethune-Cookman that was awful last season. I will say this, if we're going to quantify this, uh, a few years ago was the last time they played Bethune-Cookman. It also happened to be the debut game for another Miami guy with Cuban ties, Manny Diaz. Uh, the crowd then was right around 50,000, so it was about 6,000 more. If you're looking to quantify, there is excitement about this US uh, UM team, but it's also understood that the first game of the year is September 17th at Texas A&M. It's South Florida excitement. It's like we're going to tweet about it. We, if we talk to our friends, we're excited about it. I'll go to the big game. I'm not going to go to Bethune. I'm not going to actually go to Bethune Cookman game. Get Wait, Greg, so Amen. help me out because you're right. The first game, the season really starts at College Station against yes. Texas A&M. The following week, they play Middle Tennessee at home. Right. Another bad it, crowd. But if they beat Texas A&M and they're 3-0, and how many people are showing up to that game? They might get 50,000. It's really Middle hot. Tennessee. Man, it's yeah. really- at that point, they could be a top 10 team. Do not. No, that's rating. why I'm asking. Yeah. I understand. Oh, yeah. if, right. they, if they beat A&M, they're a top 10 team. You guys need to not forget that our allegiances to sports fandom can be knocked off by nine extra degrees. <laughs> the, this market and these teams have to earn it with these fans. They're not just going to come flocking back. Like There is some cost to the disrepair of so many years of losing and mismanagement. People will endure only so much to fill up your stadium and parking and everything else. These teams are, are going to have to earn it. And Miami as a city, as a commerce center, makes you earn it. Uh, Miami's investment is going to be a loser at the beginning. They're going to pour hundreds of millions sure. of dollars on the front end into something that's not going to immediately manifest in 40,000 season tickets. Well, I, th- I think their season ticket base has gone up, but I, I do think that there- there's a couple of things here. One is that I think the feeling that Mike was describing, he might have been talking about a sellout, but it was more like within the UM football fan community, Saturday was sort of a destination point, right, of your program caring, investing resources, really good coach, really good assistance. It was sort of the beginning of a new era, and that was really important as a feeling within the community. But I also think that, like, to Chris's point about getting on side, you don't have an alumni base really in Miami to lean on, like major programs like Ohio State do, where you have hundreds of thousands of alumni, a lot of People come to the University of Miami from out of state, and then they go back out of state after they're done with college. There are not there's you have to galvanize the sports fan community in a similar way to you like the Miami Heat or the Miami Dolphins or the Miami Marlins. You have to galvanize a sports community to come out to a game that didn't go to the school. That's completely different than most cities. So you're saying like teams like Michigan and Ohio State, you're saying that their alumni base largely live around there. So a, a big chunk of that. 100,000 at Michigan Stadium is alumni that just live there. I mean, is that necessarily like people just leave here like when they go to Miami? Not I, I, every like there's people that go to Michigan live in Miami and then they leave after. Is it really that is there data behind that that people don't 
I don't know. I just feel like, are we making up a stat right now because the crowds are sad and we're well, like, well, how many in-state kids go to the University of Miami? How many South Florida kids go to UM? I know I'm not certain. Oh, oh, I understand what Chris is what, asking what there. Do you guys, but what do you guys want to do here? The crowds aren't bad, and you want to exonerate South Florida on this one for all the reasons that the crowds aren't better than they are. South Florida either wants something that is glittery and stylish and fashionable. Or something that really wins. What Mike Ryan said that was accurate is the Orange Bowl was a dump. Didn't feel like a dump because they didn't lose for 10 seasons in the Orange Bowl. So you watch. If they do something like that for 10 seasons, if they're at the top of college football, at the top of this business, that stadium will fill up. I don't want to. It doesn't matter to me whether on campus, off campus, any of that nonsense. I am just... I'm broken that Mike Ryan's not in here today because not only would he have lost this back and forth with Chris Cody, but good God, he lost both ends of his hater parlay in the most unimaginable way possible. He hated on Florida. Look at how that game ended. So Mm, that he, uh, as part of his parlay, he had Utah (laughs) and he was giving points. So he lost that one. And then FSU, LSU, he was telling us he did not understand why it is (laughs) that LSU was only favored by three. So he has to eat toilet paper now, huh? Well, he's not here, and we're going to have to hold him to it. But a grid of death punishment is being paid today. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald is recreating. The Lil Nas X pregnancy photo shoot. Oh, boy. He did not know what he was signing up for. Chris Cody, he came in today. He was lamenting. This is what Greg does. He he takes the grid punishment, doesn't know what he's doing, and now today he's like, I've gained se- I, I've gained some weight recently. I yep. don't want anyone to see me with my shirt off. His The way his shame works is so weird. He'll whip out that toe, with that black toe, and, and his big toe. He'll whip that out with no shame. But his gu- he doesn't even, he's not even that fat, and he's so self-conscious about his stomach, but yet he'll whip out that black toe. Like, we have no idea why it's black. You know Please what? Do that. My former washboard physique mm-hmm. has taken on a couple of LBSs. It happens. I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, yeah. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the holidays. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. It's what? the holidays. It's the holidays. What's the earliest what you can say? It's the holidays. Labor Day. Labor Day. I mean, of course, it's a big yeah. weekend. I mean. I gained seven yeah. pounds yesterday. What yeah. can I tell you? You <laughs> didn't. Yeah. Everybody did. Have the, hol- have the holidays started? <laughs> no, when they, they haven't start? started. Yeah, they started. Tell me when they start. It starts. Yes. Who got this right? First week of the football season. I mean. Yeah, I'm playing the holiday card. Holiday card. It's a different holiday. That's all of us. That's all of us greeting football with a big bear hug. We got we got Rutgers punting on fourth and goal. Oh, it was great. That was <laughs> incredible. Did you, that, was, that was not the punt of the weekend. The punt of the weekend was South Carolina State on Thursday night against UCF. The guy ran 12 yards past the line of scrimmage. It, it was fourth and 19. Yes, he so sweeps good. to the right. It's like, oh, my God, he, maybe he's going to make this. And then as soon as he about to, he's about to get hit, he just decides to punt the ball 12 yards past the line it of scrimmage. It was rugby. He was playing a totally different sport. No, he, yes, he decided. Fourth and 19, he decided to punt uh, after running for 12 yards. Uh, and it was strange. I, I posit that the punt of the week, I forget which team it was, where a punt was blocked in return for a touchdown. The punt was blocked by the punter's teammate. Should uh, I make imaging for punt of the week? We should we do, do this it. every week. Yeah, well, the punt of the I week. Definitely, yeah. I definitely, I don't know. See, Chris, I feel for you because I want to do who was wrongest. I want to do that. I think it would be funny headed into any weekend to have just sound from a random person and frame it with the grammatically incorrect wrongest. But you, Chris, I wanted to get back to how brutal your Suey's week is because you have gone through a lot of stuff. We're going to play some of it here over the course of the week, but we're also, there are like 11 categories. It's an unspooling of insanity, Chris, correct? You you hate the Suey's right now. I do hate the Suey's. Ah, and do I hate them? It's just one of those things where I, I get so, in, you ever seen the scene in uh, uh, Princess Bride, the quicksand scene? That's yeah. me. This, like, that's me the last couple of weeks. It's just, I'm trying to get out. And it's just, oh, wait, I got to do this for this category. It's a lot. It's kind of like We Billy's. get the concept of quicksand. I yeah, mean. yeah, yeah. But I just had to tell you that specific scene. <laughs> what, what, where's quicksand? It doesn't really, you don't, there's not a lot of movie examples of You're quicksand. Right. Yeah, right. It, it used should to be. be more. It yeah. should be used yeah. more in film because it's a Agreed. scary thing. Imagine right. walking through the woods. Yeah. It was Imagine a big it. thing in Scooby-Doo. It was. Yeah. They were always stuck in quicksand. I always feel like, I always thought I was a guy that could get out of quicksand. I did no, too. Not. Where do you find quicksand? I wouldn't know where to go. Hmm. You guys just stunned me by pointing out that without much fanfare, it would appear 
that quicksand as a movie vehicle, not in cartoons, appears to have vanished. It has. Hmm. I, I don't remember the last time in a movie I saw the dramatic effect of someone singing in, sinking into quicksand, which does seem horrible. Right. And a misnomer. It should be slow sand because you sink by degrees. Very slowly. There's nothing yes. quick about That's it. Great point nothing by you. Nothing quick about yep. it. Mm-hmm. What would have been the last big movie that had quicksand as a plot twist in it? But anyway, it's a terrible <laughs> week for you, correct, Chris? And you are tired. You say you don't hate the Sueys. I just like by the time I've heard them so many times, like it's not making me laugh anymore. Like it's like it's one of those things where it's like once you've looked at your art, not my art, but like something you're working on so much, it's like you you get numb to it. So it's like, is this still funny? Should I cut this? So it's difficult. But there are some clips that it doesn't matter how many times we play. Like I hear them, they make me laugh every single time. And I'm trying to send these to Woody as I talk. That's why it sounds like I'm multitasking. And here they are. So he should have them now. And there are two sounds. It's two. It's from the mistake category. I think this year, mistake is our best picture. A lot of mis- a lot of we little made a mistake. lot of them. Yeah. It's a category that yeah. started as just Dan mistakes, mm-hmm. and it's blossomed out. We are all making mistakes now. We're all getting old. So there's two clips, Woody. I just send them to you. It is from the mistake category. One is Poppy Levitard, and one is Roy Bellamy. I have heard these clips 62 times over the last few weeks. Maybe wait, I don't. Maybe wait. I don't work that efficiently. Yeah. But I've heard these a lot. Which I, is which is better here, the Roy one? The is it Roy? It is it Roy mistake? Well, or? all right, I'll, I'll I'll give you the premises of them, like what my dad is going to say, and you tell me which one you want first. It's Poppy screwing up a poll question that he was asked, and Roy choking on the smoke that he claims to want all of. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh Jesus. Uh, but where, uh, Chris? What? How, so eleven categories, and what are some of your favorites? Um, uh, musical performance. I mean, with the with our musical and some of the listener submissions. Musical performance, and then some of our just like off the cuff shipping containers singing rock songs to Roy. Musical performance is strong as always. Dismissals was so loaded this year that we have it's usually just all together with Stugatz and all of us. This year we have Stugatz's dismissals, we have everybody else's dismissals, we have a ton of limited fakes. Holy shit, did Jessica have a lot of limited fakes this year? Like she just every day she poops out like three limited fakes, and Mamine had a bunch. The limited fake, I had to make cuts. Usually in years past, most of this stuff makes it. This year I had to cut stuff. At the end of the week, we're gonna probably put out a cutting room floor of like this is the shit that didn't make it but you feel really good about something when what is on the cutting room floor hurts it hurts uh, some you- of it hurts some of it i'm like this needs to go this a mean doing the cookie a mean and jessica Easy doing decision. doing the cookie monster like yeah. this just got this has to go all right so what is this what is this clip and we will do a couple of sueys today we'll do throughout the week we will do a couple of suey categories but what is this, this one today this is a teaser for later in the week from our best picture category this is a roy mistake of him choking on the smoke he wa- he claims to want all of Roy Bellamy chokes on the smoke that he claims to want all of. Yeah, we want that smoke. And yeah, sure, we may have choked on that smoke this year. But guess what? We're going to come back next season. We're going to get in that smoke there uh, again. And we're going to take know, them out. I don't know what that means. That <laughs> he sounded very, very confident. pathetic trash talk. <laughs> pathetic trash talk. We're going to spend all the smoke. I'm sorry. We I'm want all the smoke. But we're going to collect the smoke that is in our lungs. Yes. That's right. We're going to mouth kiss you. Exhale it into your lungs. And you're going to choke. Choke. Roy, that's right. Your trash talk. You you were the most repressed and least confident leader of an army charge I have ever heard about wanting the smoke. You wanted the smoke, you ran into the smoke, we all started coughing, none of it made sense anymore, and we lose. We lose the battle. Yeah, we, we retreat it, but you know what? We're going we're to come back next year. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear about it next again. year. I'm voting for that. So, yeah, well, yeah, I went on the ice strong. this year when they lost the cup, though. Yeah, and now could have handled that smoke. And now here's, here's Poppy just getting a poll question read to him, and uh, you know he makes a little mistake with it. Poppy Levitard's hilarious mistake involving a poll question: Should a woman in her 20s be flattered or insulted by being called madam? What are your thoughts here, Poppy? Flattered or insulted if you call oh, a woman in her 20s madam? Well, I would I would say that uh, she should be flattened. Flattened. She should be flattened. <laughs> okay. yeah. she might, that wasn't one of the options. <laughs> but she should be flattened was the choice. I mean, quite, uh, quite a heel turn from Ted Kravitz to Sky Sports. It, it, it would be flattened terrible, Jess. yes. If all of a sudden you were saying, uh, Madam, and then the next thing that happened is a cement mixer or something just rolled right over her and flattened her. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and on top of that, we have a bunch of Dan mistakes, a bunch of Stugatz mistakes to go uh, with all those. I'm whoa. telling you, mistakes is great. What are your mistakes? I got a, I got a few mistakes. You better. My 11? mistakes are mainly doing terrible visual things on podcasts. Like I did magic on a podcast. I did a thing where I wanted you guys to read my lips on a podcast. Remember between fight me or failure? I was like, read my. Yeah. Yeah. So I failed to. I put my stuff in there too, Roy. All right. 11 categories you are saying. And which ones are we doing today, Whittingham? Uh, to confirm, I believe we're doing Stugat's dismissals and oh limited fake. Wow! Wow! Who was that announcer, by the way? Big Talk dead. about a velvet voice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I thought I recognized it. I wasn't sure. Same. Chocular. You feel good about what you've produced this uh, twenty-five <laughs> minutes? You're so really far? good. Yeah, exceptionally <laughs> like, good. You are. I can't get the grin off my face. <laughs> You are the Miami Herald's football writer. Football is upon us, yep. and um, my picks are coming. They're in the incubator. He's got the Dolphins doing well. They're Super in the Bowl. incubator. Yeah. My mm -hmm. picks: fifteen and two. You got the Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, what Thir do you got? Thirteen uh, and no, four. No, no, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't decided yet. Uh, fifteen and two is a bit of a stretch. Thirteen, uh, twelve and five. I'm thinking eleven and six, with a possibility of twelve and five. Right. Yeah, they're, they're well, going to be really good. winning the Super Bowl, yes. Oh, right. listen, what's Buffalo done? Nothing. Right? Uh, nothing. Right. Zero. Buffalo's no, done man, nothing. Come on. More Bridge. than the Dolphins. Come on, man. What do you mean, what has Buffalo done? Buffalo's we all done nothing. regard Buffalo as a good football team going yeah. into the season. All of us would sure. be surprised. None of us would be surprised if Buffalo is a betting favorite to they, get to the Super Bowl. They are. And all of us would be surprised if anyone were out there saying, I think Buffalo is going to be a train wreck or a bad team. They are the cream of the division. The Dolphins have to rise up to where Buffalo is. Correct. And can. I'm just saying, historically, Buffalo has accomplished nothing that makes you think that they're going to be the Super Bowl champion. They are the betting favorite, uh, Buffalo is. And, and Josh Allen is all that. I get all that. But they have to prove it. Prove it. But the Dolphins have to prove it more than Buffalo has to prove it. By, yeah. by leaps and bounds, you can't say the Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl and Buffalo has to prove it. What like, a sports radio argument. The Dolphins doing? have more to prove than what, the Bills like, do. He's doing? basically <laughs> Donald <laughs> Sterling the Bills. What have they done? It's like that. Well, he's right. Anderson I mean, Cooper's been decent, so have the Bills. They've made the playoffs. They've won the division. They went to an AFC championship game. Look, man, this is what I don't even think they the, did. The, the Dolphins and Buffalo have paralleled each other. For 20 years, the Dolphins have not won a playoff game. For 17 years, Buffalo did not get to the playoffs. Those are enormously long streaks in a league where half the teams get to the playoffs. And after that, Buffalo got Josh Allen, and it got fixed, and they are a Super Bowl contender, and they've been good. Uh, they've been a good football team for four or five years. The yep. Dolphins have not been. The Dolphins have not been. The, you say they've been good because they've been a game or two over 500, but Buffalo has made it to the playoffs and is clearly ascending. For Buffalo, if Buffalo doesn't get to 12-5 and five this season, I'm thinking most people think that's a disappointment. Correct. Right. You're, But you're talking about... Flimsy expectations, not reality. I'm talking about what will the reality be. I'm just saying right now Buffalo is being oversold and the Dolphins are being grossly undersold. I'm not a betting man, but eight and a half wins for the Dolphins, I would fly wait, on that wait, over. Wait, where yeah. are you, wait a minute. Where are you getting Dolphins grossly undersold? Not in this market, they're not. Like this, what is happening around here? There are a couple of people around the country who are looking at the Dolphins and saying they're a sleeper team because they're saying they're, they see the possibility of fireworks on offense. And they're just, all they're doing really is saying, well, the Dolphin defense was pretty good last year. I assume it'll be relatively good, even though those things don't tend to transfer from year to year, neither does health. But okay. And also, Dolphins will be invigorating, interesting on offense. Uh, McDaniel will fix some things. The offensive line will be better. And so that's the analysis being done on the Dolphins. Well, you have a coach saying he's the most accurate quarterback he's ever seen. You have Hill. You have Waddle. You have Giuseppe. You have the makings of a really good team. It doesn't always have to be a buildup like, like it is for Buffalo, where you know we take these steps. Sometimes a team can surprise and find themselves in the Super Bowl. It can't happen like that. They can go from never making it to the playoffs to all of a sudden but, having a really good team. But, but the probabilities do not favor that. The probabilities no. favor one of the teams that has been good for years because they've got their quarterback situation figured out. 
We can assume Buffalo, if they get help from the quarterback position, will be great for the next 10 years. You cannot say anything like that about the Dolphins. This thing can implode a month into the season. I mean, they're already without Byron Jones at the start of the season. For you're, four games. You're, you're presuming that the Dolphins will carry on being as good at defense as they were under Brian Flores, who I do think deserves a fair bit of the credit for how good they were on defense. They also had a very fluky ability to generate turnovers, which is not something that is replic replicable year over year, the math has proven. So you're you're already, the, the Dolphins' case is already predicated upon they're already good at defense, therefore they will continue to be good at defense, which can be a faulty assumption. But then you're also assuming that they will make a massive step forward offensively, which they've made signings towards improving, but until you see it, how can you have any confidence in it? The reason they are eight and a half over under. The reason that Greg Cody is here saying swirling with these visions of delight in his head, it's going to be easy and Stu Gatson are the Super Bowl. The reason it's eight and a half is what he just said. Defense doesn't just transfer from year to year and then you add offense. Voila, I've gone from a team that's almost in the playoffs to six games better. That's not how that works. Yeah, but sometimes your defense, like, I understand what you guys are saying. Defenses will kind of go up and down, but sometimes you just have a good defense, and maybe the Dolphins do. Okay. And then, when you, if you factor in the fact that we think they have a good defense, plus you added a cheetah, I mean, that has all okay, the but, makings. But you realize, I mean, you may indeed be right on this, but you understand that the having of all the makings is a contrivance that isn't where the betting money is. It the, means nothing. The I betting mean. money is on eight and a half <laughs> games is the number they will win, according to people who win or lose money on figuring these things out. Right. Dan, didn't you have the Dolphins last week making the playoffs? Like, you think they're going to be good, too. I right? know what, it happened. It's, what happened. My dad and Stugatz have gone flying you by Dan, so now Dan has to be the guy that's like, whoa, oh, guys, Dan, relax. You're, you're not going to pull Back. You're not I know, but back. this is the position this, the show, damn thing. this is I the mean, position this show over puts here. me in. <laughs> yep. Love a wet blanket. Perpetually, yep. yes. No. I can uh, Join us. A couple weeks ago, Dan's like, I'm kind of big on the Dolphins. Yeah. And then I got thought, my I dad it was crazy. go flying by them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Super Bowl, Dan. Clearly Super Bowl favorites. <laughs> and so where do we go from there? As a show, like, when, when, when you're four <laughs> yes. days before the season, you haven't played a game, and the two clowns you do the show They've with been looking good in the preseason, already gone to they're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Say back to back. What choices do I have before they played? All right. So you had them play the game, go 40, back to 14, back. Undefeated. 40 14 against New England last week. <laughs> that's all. That's as far as I'm at going. Ravens. And it's a at ridiculous Ravens. prediction. No, nope. Ravens. I'm not doing that. Yet. Lamar's playing. Nope. Stupid. Mm -hmm. but We're he's almost playing. sponsoring this segment, Dan. We're going to have to fit in or fit out here soon. My dad is not faking it with the Dolphins because he took Tua in our fantasy league <laughs> way too high. <laughs> I think my Someone dad... took Tua with the fourth pick in my draft. Hello. In the first round. I, I love that. I swear to God. Upside. Like, what is Major happening? upside for Tua this year. I mean, seriously. Here's the definition of ridiculous. The definition of ridiculous is that an eight and a half over under means the betting public thinks the Dolphins are going to be a 500 team, which is impossible with a 17 game season. Grant you, but eight and a half times two is 17. That means the bet is that the Dolphins are going to be worse than the past two seasons, even though they added Tyreek Hill, even though they have the, their best running game in years, oh. even though they have an above-average defense that is returning all 12 people with the most defensive snaps last year, even though they signed Taron Armstead, the, 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 the best free agent available. They've had a great offseason, and now you're telling me they're going to be worse than the past two years? Ain't going to happen. Mm-hmm. Impossible. As, because the Dolphins have never had great off seasons before and it doesn't work out. No. Got, they've never signed Tyreek Hill before. This is different. They've never signed Tyreek Hill before. Trainer for Brandon Marshall. Just Nick Saban. He ain't, he ain't Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Woody, one of the great uh, delights of my career here, because the local hour has always been the thing that has mattered to me most, uh, is that we arrive now at the place where this is a delusionally Homer dolphin hour and the country is listening to what is happening now because we're a national show that also does local stuff and they're like what the fuck is the matter with those guys who think they're just gonna waltz into football and they get an offensive lineman and Tyree Kill and, and, and Stu Gatz and Cody are just in consensus mm -hmm. we're going to win the Super Bowl yes of course of course the Super Bowl will be won no one has played a game they haven't watched any preseason football there have been like four people hired and they're like yep Super 
Super Bowl, easy, done. Do we even have to play the season? This must sound so absurd to all the other markets listening to this show. I think there are some people that are a bit higher on the Dolphins, but like they're, week three is home against the Bills. Yeah. Week four is at the AFC champion Bengals. Yeah, first mm-hmm. month, very tough. That first gets month. easy. I know, yeah. but. Gets very easy after that, I Chris. Know, but if they don't beat those teams, then they're not who you say they are. You come they're out not of a those... team that's making no. an improvement. You try to get through those games, those four games at two and two. And then you have like the easiest schedule in the NFL. Not like literally five to twelve. Right. The easiest yeah. schedule. Yes. Well, then yeah. thirteen picks mm-hmm. up again. We've I'll even take this. one and three. <laughs> hey, one and three start. No, no problem. No, no, no problem. If, if this oh, is the team, out. a little one and three. No, no. Wow. a little one no. and three. They could be seven yeah. and four, Please. like that. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. and okay. three start. Seven and four, like they're like, like this. That. Right. No, you got to go like Tua and Tua to start the season. There you go. Tua and Tua. Yeah, Tua and Tua. We gotta say about that. Right. You it's just got to get to the dance, guys. All right. That's all you got to do. Get to the playoffs and be healthy. You know what I mean? There's no point in winning 16 games in the regular season. Uh, unnecessary. Don't need to do it. Do you know Josh Allen has almost <laughs> twice as many touchdowns against the Dolphins than he has against any other opponent? He has 21 touchdowns in eight games against the Dolphins. What's They're 7-1. Yeah, what great. have the Bills proven? Mm-hmm. Greg Cody was just pantomiming. To me, and and I think to no one else, pointing at his chest. And what I can see reading his lips was him saying, Tua and Tua. When they start the first month, Tua and Tua, that's mine. I own that. I copyright it. If anyone tries to steal it from me, no one can have it. The Dolphins, after one month, will be Tua and Tua. No one's ever made the uh, Tua wordplay joke. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Oof. Your voice was doing so good five this morning, dollars. too. Oh. We, we were actually just talking no, about the voice here. still is fine. No. It's fine, but occasionally some phlegm right. comes up. We I mean, what actually, can I do? We, I mean, we, I smoke eaters. We I criticize mean. you a lot. We were talking in here. You can hear that the dead shows are done. Like, yeah, you sound so much better this morning. They're getting morning. at me. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're finally getting at until me. Until that phlegm. But until, up until that. Woo. Listen, they're always in me. It's somewhere deep inside of me. They'll always be there. The Hell phlegm yeah. will always be there. But <laughs> It's like a love song. It's, but the summer is working its way out of me. <laughs> the love song of phlegm. It, it's, it's always in me. I love It'll my always phlegm. be yeah. there. It's yeah. like the most emotional of things will always be connected. Right. Me and the lack of health and care for my career. You know, like in those commercials where there's like, sound good like today, they sound. anthropomorphic perfect toe fungus that's like trying to get out of your toes it's always there yeah and i feel like we can do a similar thing with stugatz's phlegm i love scratch the reason i don't th- uh, take care of my athlete's foot is i love the feeling of itching my athlete's oh, foot no. it feels so oh, good no. it's right no. between no. my no. man's feet no. 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 occasionally no. Sort of no. Acting, no. but no. i no. love scratching no. the athlete's oh, yeah. foot no. thank you no. itching in general is a great no. feeling no. underrated no. feeling i'm no. with you a good itch. until the no. athlete's foot itching no. i mean we all get no scratching that we love a good itch no i love a good itch either right yeah i hate this thing and if you fix it, you can't say these dogs are barking. <laughs> You're right. What's your favorite area to scratch? Ooh. Come on, man. Ooh. The reason you don't That's get a rid question. of your athlete's mm. foot is because you like to scratch the webbing. Well, I put Tenactin on like two of the three toes that have it, and I leave that one toe there just to itch it. It feels great. I'm telling you, with a sock on, it feels fantastic. The crotch would be my answer, by the way. Yeah. I like a good lower back scratch. (laughs) Let's all do it right now. Put your hand. Don't let's not go. We're not going ridiculous here. We're not talking about butt like a butt well above your butt. Like where the bullseye would be. Okay. The bullseye. What are you doing? What are you doing? Lewis gets it. What does that mean? Yeah. What are you doing? What? Why do you want us to scratch? That feels feels good. good. Feel it. It feels good. What do you think the bullseye is? (laughs) If you have to ask Billy. His entire conversation. Really? You're going to describe that region of your body to anybody in the world as <laughs> your or anyone else's bullseye? Really? I, how else was I supposed to describe your it? Your lower back. Bullseye. Just say, we knew what you meant. You said scratch your lower back. I didn't want you to think, I didn't want you to think, bullseye. I didn't want someone going like, you know, in the the, the butt. Like, well, that, yeah. would the that would be the bullseye. That would be the bullseye, the butthole. Be, yeah. Yeah. That's what we all thought you meant. They don't know what the bullseye is. They don't know. Why Billy's bullseye is the this? butt. Hell yeah. Why did you do this? Yes, why? why? I, I should have just never why said the bullseye. <laughs>
We're going to kick off the Sueys at the end of this hour with the limited fakes. Uh, he said, Chris Cody said he cut it down to a mere 17 minutes <laughs> oh of God. limited fakes. I, I probably had 26 minutes at one point. Like, uh, it's, it's any favorites? Any favorites? You're saying Jessica and Amin polluted was, the category. In, in terms of quantity, Jessica and Amin bring it strong. Generally, Mike Ryan and me, like in the past, the show, like we would be the ones pooping out a lot of fakes Amin and Jessica took took the reins this year, but everyone's in. I think I'm looking around the room. I believe ev almost everybody in this room has at least one limited fake. L Witty actually sneaky some some limited fakes in here. Wow. Bruce Buffer, I believe, makes an appearance. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Detective Cochran. Actually, I think that might have gotten cut. Actually, now that I'm no thinking out loud. <laughs> It's unfortunate. Jero Keach make the cut? Yes, Jero Keach. Oh, yeah, right. That's oh, enough. Wow. That is uh, about enough out of the both of you. We will have the best <laughs> limited fake a mere 17 minutes. And as Chris Winningham asks, did Jero Keach that make the great. cut? That one's great. I'm thinking Up to myself, Wayne. it should have been maybe four minutes. I'm thinking <laughs> limited fake should have been four minutes, not 17 minutes. Uh, the, uh, the audience enjoys uh, Dwayne these. Wade. Why, why, why are you shitting on our, our stories before they've even begun? Billy, why are you making faces back there? I'm just living, man. How many? How, lo how many fakes are there? There's probably. I can look at like my marks here. I'm looking at them right now. There's probably 17 minutes. 32. Really sounds. It 32. sounds. Oh. It, There's it, probably 32. Is this the Oscars? I mean, dude, I literally had 60 to choose from. These are funny. I'm telling you, this right, is 17. It's good. 17, 17 minutes. minutes. Also okay. on display. We got Mike Glennon talking to Mike Glennon's wife. Right. Mike Ryan, Amin Al Hassan. Some of these, no, like, I had to make it. You're right. No, it yeah. wasn't Mike Glennon talking to Mike Glennon's wife. It was Mike Glennon's neck yeah. talking well, to the wife. I think his wife was Mike there, Glennon. too. It was the wife and his neck made an appearance. <laughs> it might win. Also, I mean, we have fake Jason Witten getting out of bed in the morning. Uh, like, these things, we can't. What do you want oh, yeah. to cut these yeah, things? Like, so. I can't. Okay. All right. Well, what will be on display <laughs> in this year's series? Because they've been a tapestry woven by an insane Chris Cody. If he is no good today or this week, you will forgive him. He's been in a special dungeon like hell not seen since Billy last visited the useless sound dungeon. It's like we tag in. Like, I'm kind of done now. My, my, like, you know, the sueys are done. <laughs> Billy starts nah, I this I don't know week. about that. <laughs> I don't know who has it worse, but yes, it's been a lot. And so thank you for your work on this. But we can also look at the sueys and see if Chris showed bad judgment or not, whether he was efficient in the way that he edited them, because 17 minutes sounds like it needs a little more of a second. You know what? I was wrong. It's 16 minutes. Oh, oh well, oh, that's wow. better. That helps. There you go. So yeah. 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 In the world. Yeah. 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 Apologize, yeah. Dan. Yeah, yeah. You made sure. Jay I'm sorry, Chris. Apologize, Dan. <laughs> we talked in the last hour about Belichick coming five days early as a preparation measure to Miami to get used to the heat. And I just, I really do want to ask this question. I know you guys hear me and hear apocalyptic hopelessness as I talk about climate change and Pakistan being a third underwater. But as you have 500-year droughts all over the globe, as China is in an unbelievable drought as well. Like when we keep sending these football players out this fourth quarter of this Dolphin game, Stugatz, there's no preparing for that. Belichick no. getting here five days early. Like you think Miami was an advantage in September before. Like this, is, these, these, you can argue these are going to be inhumane playing conditions to try to play a football game in, given that w us walking around are like, good God, I'm going inside. Yeah, I've lived here for, I don't know, 20, 25 years, and I can't get used to it. So five extra days down here is not going to help the Patriots. I'm sorry. It's just not. I understand why he's doing it. I get the premise around it, but five days down here, fourth quarter, they're going to be exhausted. That's the advantage the Dolphins get, though, early in the season, it, every year. It, it's a health hazard, and, and that's the reason the NFL restricted uh, practices to one a day, not two a day. And that's the reason that practices used to be like two and a half hours. The Dolphins were on the practice field for like an hour and a half tops this preseason. I mean, so you got, I'm talking about not what we've talked about in the past, where the Dolphins have a September advantage. Or the Patriots, I think, are like two and seven their last nine trips to Miami or something absurd like that. I'm talking about playing football in this weather when you guys know what it feels like to walk around. Stugatz, you know what it feels like to just golf and how quickly you're running into your house. Like, it's not the heat of the past. It's an entirely different, hotter than, than ever it's been type of heat when I'm talking about inhumane working conditions for anybody. Like most people aren't gonna want to sit outside. If you can watch on the on on the red zone on Sunday, 
and not have to sit in a swampy section to to have to wait for timeouts? I think most people right. would choose to be in air conditioning. I think you're right. They're they're saying on Sunday, this Sunday, 93, and it's going to feel like 102. Like, that's what it's been like down here. It's just heavy down here. It feels heavy. We're, but what I'm saying is worse than it's ever been. I'm not talking yeah, about... we're in bad shape, too, Dan. But Stugatz, I mean, these are... Stugatz, what I'm saying is there is no human condition. What I'm telling you is the heat levels have risen to such a point, there is no human condition where people are going to feel any good in the fourth quarter of that game playing in that heat, no matter how fit they are, 4% body fat fit, I run all my life away. I'm telling you that that the, what, what's going to be experienced... But that would work both ways, would it not? It'd I'm be not the Dolphins talk, as Scott, well. I'm not talking about advantages in a football game. I'm talking about uh, human health conditions. Uh, you, it, you, I you, mean, you, the NFL starts this week. I'm not worried about everyone else. I mean, sorry. I mean Dan, if the heat is what's <laughs> bothering you about football, we right. have bigger fish to fry, you know yeah. what I mean? Do you think I'm wrong in my I assumption? think there's more dangerous things going on in the game Sunday than it being two degrees hotter. I I, I think two. two degrees hotter, it's not. It is, uns- like, and it's weird because you talk to locals, like people who have been here, in my, and it's like, has it always been this hot? No, no. it hasn't. No. It has not always been this hot. And also, it, as it relates football advantages, the Dolphins specifically designed a roof on the stadium to where the visitor sideline is exposed to the sun for the entire game at during a 1 p.m. kickoff while the home team is not. So the Dolphins will be in the shade the entire <laughs> That's game. That's cold, the, man. The, the visitors will not be. The heady play. Which, by the way, yeah. You're baking, you're baking the opposing team. <laughs> and also, that section of the seats is on television. And you will probably see on Sunday that area vacated. That you will see large swaths of that area empty, and it's not because people don't have tickets there. It's because they're downstairs in a club level inside enjoying air conditioning. Because hell, if you're going to sit there for three hours. And, and this is oppressive heat times a 320 pound lineman wearing 40 pounds of equipment. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine how they get through a game. You're going to see hands on hips in the first half. Sunday. Stugatz, you are right. Uh, you stood corrected in the first hour. I will now stand corrected. This is not to talk about how heads will explode because we are baking people on the sidelines is not the spirit of going into football season. You guys hate football. No, like, I'll that's tell you all what. We're supposed to be celebrating, Dan. Yeah. I mean, I'm, football's I, here. I, I you not, tried to ruin football with concussions years ago. Now you're trying to ruin it with it's too hot for people to play. Right. Like, <laughs> what do we do, the cancel ruiner. the game on Sunday? No, no, really? I, I love a ruin. I appreciate your correction. Droughts in China. No. I will change my tone. Mm. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate all of your, uh, your concerns, and I believe you're right. And therefore, I will tell you, not only do I love football so much, I love football so much that I was locked in on Saturday more than any game of the weekend on South Dakota State and Iowa. Because oh, it was a beauty. Stugatz, no, yeah. but wait a minute. I'm going to tell you, not only was I locked in, yeah. it, it, it for me was the game of the weekend. Yeah, the under? For, no, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but this, the thing that happened at the end of the game is something that I've been wishing for my entire life watching broadcast sports television. I think has been underreported throughout the country. I've never seen it happen before, okay? For those of you who do not know, I will won 7-3. to three. The 7 was not by touchdown. The 7 was a field goal and two safeties. Nice. <laughs> but by the Way end of football. But yeah. by the end yeah. of the game, I've been waiting for this to happen in baseball games with perfect games and everything else. They've got a sponsored drive of the game they gotta get to. Wow. Oh wow. And they gotta get to it. And this has never happened. I've never seen it happen before. And so I'm like, when are they gonna do it? When is it going to come? It comes at the very end. The drive of the game is a safety. I'm like, you can't do that. That's a big that's drive. That's not the drive of the game. <laughs> that is not, that's not what those people sponsored. <laughs> that, not, that's not a drive of the game. If it was an insurance company sponsoring the safety of the game, then you can put the safety of the game there. But it's the drive of the game. That's ridiculous. But they needed something, and that safety bailed not, them why out. Not the field I mean, goal drive. I yeah. had a field goal drive. South Dakota State had a field goal I drive. I think you have to call it the drive of the game before the drive or something like that. Or as it happens, they probably figured that Iowa at some point was going to score. I mean. 
Kirk Ferentz has been there for Stugatz 30 years yeah. as somebody who has been stealing money. He has weathered the Terrible. racist strength coach and, furthermore, the committee that was assembled of his former players that suggested that the Iowa Hawkeyes, what they needed was him not doing it anymore, and then he disbands the committee. If all of that— <laughs> He found the new committee. <laughs> if, if that only gets you to safeties better than South Dakota State and the perennial 8-4 and four Iowa Hawkeyes, like, what are we doing? I could not imagine being an Iowa football fan. It seems miserable. Like, why in the world would you ever get excited about football season? They're- they have the same season every year. Nine and three, shitty offense. Have a, you know, go five and one and play a big top 15 game against some other Big Ten team. Lose by four touchdowns. Boring offense. Do it all over again. Why would you ever? ever be an Iowa football fan. There was a time, though, where Iowa football was relevant, and seven points, two safeties, and a field goal was enough, and Hayden Fry was the coach. And I am telling you, he is the biggest badass of all the coaches in the history okay, of coaching. I don't want to do the Hayden Fry Oh, he'd take Mick Cronin in. Hayden Fry show. I mean, yes. I'm not doing yeah, the Chuck Hayden Long Fry was show. the quarterback. He's a cover of Sports I'm Illustrated. That. I'm not hey, doing the We've done it six Hayden times Fry. in the show's history. Oh, I love Hayden for, Fry. For, yeah, big it time. It is strange, is it not, Roy? Roy, will you agree with me? Did I? Well, football was big when we were growing up. Stugatz, would you agree with please, that? Please stop. All right. Please he's right. stop. He's Thank right. you. They don't come any better than Hayden Fry. Had, oh, yeah. had a day of the week named after him. Wow. I mean, yep. he's, he's really good. You're exactly right. Yeah. Why aren't we celebrating Phil Parker? Shock <laughs> Just one second before we do that, Billy. Please bring us back there. Iowa, six and one in games where they punt eight or more times. Like Iowa wants to, oh, they want that's, to that's impressive. They yeah. want to, that's they a good stand position. They want, to, they want yeah. to punch you to death. And I'm just saying though, if if what Kirk Ferentz gets you, like as, <laughs> as you weather those racist strength coach and the committee that you disbanded when they ruled of your former players, you need to leave. If it gets you four with two safeties and a sponsored drive of the game that's a safety to beat South Dakota State seven seven to three. Fuck are we doing? Why? What is even the point? What is the point of Iowa football? <laughs> Kirk, 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 Kirk Ferentz, by the way, has a contract through 2029. Yeah. 2029. You gotta, you gotta that pays him contracts. $7 million a year. I mean, he's winning. <laughs> yes, $7 he million. Yes. Uh, it, uh, the key to the game, because I do love football, Billy, the key to that game, and I loved this, they came in seriously before that game and said the key to the game was honor the football. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? It means don't it means don't turn the ball over. But, but, it just so honor the football. Take care by by of the it, way, Dad. I believe Iowa's punter punted eight times and six of them were down inside the twenty. Oh, he was great. Ryan Ryan Nanny of the shutdown full cast was amazing on Iowa. He also like actually did some research on the last sixty teams in college football to have won with only seven points. And like goes back to 1981 or something like that. He went looking game by game and did not find a single game out of those 60. It was the team that won with seven points didn't score Wait, a touchdown. You say that on the other end. Am I wrong when I say Appalachian State lost and they scored 40 and a quarter? They did. They did, yeah. 40 quarter. in the fourth wow. quarter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> enough against the Mac Brown team, though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Wait, can someone explain that to me? Mac Brown, if you just get a couple of guys who can stop anybody. Just a couple of guys. How is he able to have that kind of offense all the time but can't stop anybody? Their defensive coordinator is a recently unretired Gene Chizik. Yeah. He unret- He was on television on the SEC Network. I believe he was on television for several years, and he unretired <laughs> to try and fix the North Carolina defense for Mac Brown. Wow. And what it produced was a 40-point fourth quarter in which somehow they still won. You should probably re-retire. Yeah. That would, uh, <laughs> I love Stugatz that a whole lot of people were discovering this weekend, uh, Robert Griffin. They were discovering on the broadcasts that he is very good at this. And, he is very good. Yeah. And he loves college football, but not only is he very good at it and he loves college football, 
uh, what's clear in the way that he's calling the game beyond confidence and relaxed is uh, he has the same enthusiasm for it that Romo does. Now, I don't know if he's manufacturing that or not, uh, but whatever his television energy is, I don't know if he's acting or if it's real. Uh, I know he loves college football and it sounds real to me uh, and it and it pops because. And it's weird that it would pop because you would think enthusiasm for what you're watching, like the constructs of broadcast have become so rigid and starched that a guy's energy enthusiasm is something that jumps out at you, even though you're like broadcasting games. Of course, there should be energy and enthusiasm. Why does it stand out that Robert Robert Griffin Jr. is doing the telecast in a way that is high energy? The third. That's a fun. Yeah. yeah. What I call him? RG3. Junior. Yeah, you just called him Robert. Yeah. It's not RGJ. It's RG3. It's not, not his name. It's okay, $10. fair enough. We talked about yeah. the guys, yeah. Yeah. Three $11. Lines after yes. Junior for a That's number, it's $10. My bad, yeah. my bad, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Honor granddad. Yeah. 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 Honor granddad. Two before him, then. Two before okay. How much of this RG3 owe $11? How much of this RG3 analysis is based on the fact that he said the word orgy on live television? He was relaxed in general. <laughs> was he as relaxed as Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman doing the jump around at Wisconsin? That was uh, that had really that had some sensuality. It was in very it. sexual, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't sexual, very sexual. I mean, yeah, it, it, you know, didn't look right. It had some <laughs> sensuality. What does that mean? <laughs> didn't look right. Well, Explain yourself, Whittingham. When. We talk about broadcasts, and now La Liga will not allow analysts or commentators to share opinions that can call the league into question. When that is something that is uh, being codified into into law, what is happening I mean, in the it's, sport it's of a, soccer that would allow that? I mean, there's always been that tension, right? There's always been the tension of like where you get your checks from. And you try, you do your best uh, to maintain your objectivity. And very often, like La Liga in particular is one where the league's governance has played a huge role on Real Madrid, on Barcelona. Uh, and they have a, you know salary cap rules and all this stuff that change a lot. I mean, the, the referees as well can fall under that purview. There's a lot of things that are very common subject matter during games, which th there's always like the understood tension between like ESPN having a rights deal and you're not going to be too critical of a partner that you're paying a bunch of money to and you're in business with, but there's at least some buffer there. If you're just directly working for the league, then that you're sort of making that trade once you take that check. I want to say that nobody cares in the watching of these broadcasts because you're just sort of, you know, going to the escape of television and whether the sound's up or not. It's a, it's accent on a party, whatever it is that football means to you, and the broadcast is ancillary. But I can't say that in good conscience when I know so many of you get the most unreasonably mad about whatever broadcaster X is doing because the framing isn't exactly what you want. Like, I want to say, it's not, I don't think it's anything about the principles or journalism or conflict of interest. Nobody cares anything about that. But you care a great deal about who's broadcasting the games and how. You get as mad as I see you about anything, hating Joe Buck because he roots against your team. So you guys... Tell me how it is that you want your broadcast because I would just want maximum honesty. I don't want I want I want live wires on everyone, mics on everyone. I want to hear what what is real and I want my broadcasters telling me the truth. I don't want them compromised by anything. I just want them letting go because they're framing my broadcast which is supposed to be fun. I, I think that's an interesting distinction that needs to be made though. I think football fans want the football truth. I don't think they want uh, to hear the announcer start opining on the danger of football and CTE and, and how I wouldn't let my son play football. I, they don't want to hear that, I don't believe. Or they, the heat. Yeah, you know, right. anything like that. They yeah. want the football truth. Tell me about the game. Tell me about how the the quarterback sucks or he missed that read. Yes. Don't preach to me that it's a bad. It's a dangerous sport. You would be awful in the booth, Dan. I mean, <laughs> I would not. Be, I, I would not be joyful. I would be. I would probably be a little too honest. I guess that's what I'm lamenting. I'm I'm lamenting that you guys don't actually. I mean, imagine want you asking honesty. Dan Deardorff if it's too hot out here for the players <laughs> right. to play. 
I door. mean, he would tear your head off. Damn yes, right he would. Are you yeah. Kidding me? Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, can, there, you can Give we, me Tony Romo. Can we right. do something here? Can we just have at the end of the show today, Stugatz running up and down Ocean Drive just like two or three times, <laughs> so he can tell me about how it is that this heat isn't going to be awful for human beings <laughs> on not Sunday? A football player, exactly. I, but I'm just saying that. What we're going to see on Sunday isn't meant for football players either. It's not meant for any human being. It's not meant for animals. The whole sport's not meant was, for any human being. I was at a being. petting zoo on Sunday. <laughs> I was at a petting zoo. It wasn't meant for the donkeys. It wasn't. It wasn't meant for the rabbits. It wasn't meant for. It wasn't meant for the tiny pigs. They were all overheating. They were cooking. They were cooking at the petting zoo. <laughs> it wasn't meant for the fish. The water is hotter now. No. Yeah, right. Yet you went. I mean, <laughs> is anyone not worried about the fact that we can't be outside anymore? <laughs> oh God! You went to a petting zoo. Petting zoo at a party. Greg, oh. you really think that they wear forty oh, pounds of pads idea. on the football field? Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! Don't you? It's 10 pounds. They're not wearing 40 pounds of padding. Yeah, that's poetic. Roy, license. thank you. You know, thank you for that correction, Roy. We're not rolling. We're not rolling. Sorry. Padding, padding used to be heavier back in the day. Right. That is true. Yes, that thank is true. You. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my statement was technically correct at one point. You got to embellish. But it's, it's 2022. Okay. It's, it's hot. 10, you make it's it hot 40. Right. I don't believe, I, I believe full padding weighs more than 10 pounds. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm Look all in on that. I'm all in on that. <laughs> Apparently, Roy has looked it up. Uh, no, I mean forty pounds, really. Oh, I mean, you haven't really... looked it up? No, of course not. I'll, I'll look it up, Greg. Yeah, look it up because I guarantee it's closer to forty. They're not firefighters or knights. They weigh more. There's knights. Pet, fight, you think firefighters? What they wear is heavier than football players? Yes, yes. Oh, I don't. The jacket is heavier joking? than the pants. I don't, I don't think so. Are you so. joking, no, Greg? Are you kidding? Not unless you count, uh, include the axe and all the. Uh, no, no, not including the packs that they're wearing. Have you on top of the pads. A like helmet pads. weighs four and a half pounds. All right, roughly. right there. You got the half a ten right there. The shoulder pads are four to five Greg, pounds, that's depending 10. on your position. Oh, Greg, ten. Greg, yeah. you you actually said earlier. You had football players playing in forty pounds of padding, Correct. and and no we're one already corrected at, you. He's close. We're yeah. already at ten. We're, at, we're at nine, and there's not much more than that. That's it. Those are the big. Those are the big Here weights. A game jersey is about a pound. Eleven. No, it's not. It's That's cool. I'm reading yeah. right here. I mean, come on. Let's I looked go. it up. Yeah. The pants are about a pound. Twelve. Um, players might wear about a pound, pound and a half of additional pads. Fourteen. All right, I got some more coming. Hold on, right. we're not done yet. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. don't walk away in the exact same thing you are. Hold. That's the end of the list. Hold no, on. You 14, got shoes. But and he also, said four. Yeah, the shoes. Sixteen. Yep, the shoes are the about shoes uh, three don't weigh pounds. A pound. Okay. Shoes don't count. That's right. They're on your feet. The cup. Are you walking 17. around? Seventeen. Yeah, that's yeah. gotta be heavy. Okay. Do you have them walking around naked the rest of the time that they're not wearing shoes or shirts or pants? Because you're talking about additional weight. Yeah. The helmet and the shoulder pads and maybe like the pads that they put on like their thighs. Thigh pads. Is it. Greg. Okay. He didn't even mention the backpack, which oh, is another gloves. three. Yeah. Pack. Exactly. Backpack. Let's, let's round it up to twenty. Backpack. Let's say let's say twenty. 20. Becomes okay. 40. Okay. Becomes sports radio. radio. You, know, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. you, you, you want believe that? that a football player? You're still believing after we've done the tally that a football player is heavy, wearing heavier equipment than a firefighter? I do. Yeah, I think so. And I respect the firefighter like nobody else. Mm -hmm. This is not a disrespect to the firefighter. Believe me. Well, the firefighter, let's think about this for a second, because I'm including the hose and the, the yeah, firefighter having to run no. into. Uh, I've worn that. firefighter equipment. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? I, I was, yeah, while I was in college, I was trying out to be a firefighter. Right. And I was doing the training. Bona fides. Yeah, and that was, that's heavy, dude. That is definitely not football pads. No. Well, that it's not much, like American Idol, Roy. You go to school for it. What do you mean you're trying out? I mean, did you go an audition? Uh, What'd you do? Yeah, uh, it's a part of the firefighters test, and uh, I, as you can see, I failed. But uh, <laughs> and how much did it wear? How much did the gear wear? What happened? Choke on the smoke? What happened? There was no <laughs> smoke at the time. <laughs> he wanted all the smoke, and he started choking. <laughs> no, there was no smoke at the time. <laughs> I'm coming. I'll save you. <laughs> but I was ready for the smoke, though. <laughs> Forty-five pounds on the firefighters' gear. Oh, wow. Forty-five Jesus. pounds. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. I'm still working on wow. the football stuff for you. <laughs> How about you wear 20 pounds and you get to the fire quicker? <laughs> oh, Jesus. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, 45 pounds is ridiculous. You're running in slow motion. The aforementioned quicksand, you're it's in 45 fire. pounds. 
the it's oxygen the tank that you go trying where? to prevent you from burning. You got to streamline that equipment. I'm sorry. Oh, what would you cut? What would you cut? What would you cut? Wait, but here. he might be right here because time is of the f uh, essence. of the essence yes. when there's a fire yeah, and correct. when you're wearing 45 pounds worth of equipment. Guys, yeah. what are you doing? Plus, get an, there axe. Doing. Like, Plus just, an axe. You, you can take an L every once in a while. No, that's Fi the thing. They firefighter cannot. Firefighter gear, <laughs> heavier cannot. than football gear. Firefighter gear, heavy for a reason. No, no you got to get to a fire with alacrity. Really? To be fair, that's a good adjective. Thank you. I did it just for you, Witty. <laughs> no, seriously, 45 pounds, too much. Meet in the middle. <laughs> football the middle. football and firefighting right. meet in the middle. What kind of expertise do you have here? Make it 30 pounds Dad, of equipment. do you think that they prefer more weight, or do you think it's necessary? I have no idea. I don't know. I haven't seen Can the we union make this contract. Heavier? This shit's not heavy <laughs> enough. I'm walking into a burning building. Can how, you make it heavier, How please? can you have this much? It does slightly, slow down the process. Okay. Have yeah, you dude. seen Backdraft? I have, actually. Yeah. Not in the theater, of course. No, of course not. Right. But I have seen it. Didn't it like be. it. Really? Yeah. I loved wow. it. Didn't, didn't like it. Too much it. action. Yeah. Yeah. Really? It, it's the fighting yeah. fires. Too much action? Too much. <laughs> really? Yeah. Too nerve-wracking. action movie. Too nerve-wracking. <laughs> I don't like action films. What was the on the Greg Cody show? You were complaining about some film being too gory. <laughs> Oh, House, House of Dragons. He didn't like the first oh episode. He's like, too, too gory. Hands were being chopped off. <laughs> Body parts were being uh, carted away uh, on a horse-drawn cart. It was gory <laughs> out wait, the ass. Wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> hold ass, on. Huh? What? Wow. Hold on, hold on. Bullseye. Please, please. <laughs> let's just get some imaging right now and just have, let's capitalize on this market of everyone wants a pod talking about the Game of Thrones spinoff show. So go ahead, Cody. Give us your best minute just railing against it because you're an old person. All right, look. Everybody knows I love Game of Thrones because I'm a I dragon don't think fan. Everyone has that. I, I had no idea. Uh, uh, I mean, a dragon fan. Greg, Daenerys, the mother of all dragons. He's very lecherous. He's very, I mean, come it's, on. It's the first thing he mentions anytime he brings up. <laughs> so I was predisposed to love House of Dragons. So gross. You're just... leering at somebody. I mean, yeah, so come on. Yeah. 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 Stop making that noise. Stop. Please stop. Stop with the... Please, uh, please stop. Uh, no, nah, it's necessary. So I was... <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so I was predisposed to love House of Dragons, but it's too gory. Real life is gory enough. I don't want to see hands being chopped off, limbs being carried off Real on a cart. Real life is gory Oh, enough. my God. It was I mean, just terrible. Right. I mean, there's a lot of blood out there. There was a lot of blood out there. It's, uh, you know, take me away... To a place that's nice, not to, uh, right. I don't want to watch so a cart full of show? body parts. Because I love Game of Thrones, so I'm watching the first episode of House of Dragons, giving it a chance, thinking I'm going to love it, and it was too gory. Will I give episode two a shot? I probably will, but that'll be their last chance to reel me in. Oh, wow, last they have one more yeah. chance. Yeah. Last not chance. Even a strike three. Yes. You're giving them a second chance. I'm giving them a second chance. Very, very nice yes. of you. So discerning. <laughs> Thank you. In the first... Game of Thrones season four ends or season five begins where someone literally having their head squeezed <laughs> until the true. point that it exploded. That that's a li that's a literal thing that happened in Game of Thrones. Someone's head was squeezed off, <laughs> and you're concerned about gore. Like you know what you're getting into when you watch Game of Thrones. It is very gory, and there's a lot of bad sex. Well, there was a lot of Daenerys as well, baby. That's a great thing to double down on. Smart. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, smart. Thank you. Read the room, Dad. <laughs> Everyone loves to think of you leering at a... At a <laughs> yeah. at and then when we call him out on it, he makes noise. On television. <laughs> yeah, so it's totally... It's totally She's pleasant. an actress. Yeah. I'm not leering at a real woman. Come on. What do you take me for? A married man. I've been for 40 years. Really? Congrats. And, and, and happily married for 35. Really? Wow. No, I'm just kidding. He has said that joke it's, uh, it's, it's, so many times. It's his go-to joke, right, around the family? It's, it's yeah. it's a good Everyone's joke. got a go-to yeah. joke. Everyone's yeah. got a go-to. You have to, yeah. And now, the Suey nominees for Best Limited Fake. Mike Ryan, Limited Fake Lou Holtz on LSD. Tripping my balls off. <laughs> I can't Play a little touch of gray. <laughs> You cannot give me enough fake Lou Holtz saying any number. Tripping of my pal self. <laughs> you can't give me enough. 
the, the killing into club drugs. The, the, I'm not sure what you're on a pacifier <laughs> to avoid eating my own face. Chris Cody, limited fake scene from Liar Liar. It was me! Outside looking in. Jessica Smetana, limited fake Dan Levitard's first cell phone. The what? Titanic, stop. Has sunken, stop. John Jacob Astor, stop. Is missing, stop. You think that was my phone? You think that my first phone was uh, the Titanic's emergency signal? Amin El Hassan, limited fake Bam Adebayo. Oops, I'm sorry, guys. Let me set more screen assists over here. Oh, oh, I'm just Rudy Gobert with a little bit more handles. Amin El Hassan, limited fake Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Mike Ryan's limited fake Mike Glennon and Amin El Hassan's limited fake Mike Glennon's wife arguing about Mike's NFL career. Did you watch me at NC State? <laughs> I was all ACC. <laughs> I don't have necessarily the mobility, but no one can see over the line like me. M Michael, the ACC Network job is a good job. It's a stable I'm job. I'm ready to pack it in. I've got a lot of good football left in me. I can step up in the pocket with the best of them. No one can scan the field like me. But wouldn't it be nice to be around the family more often and not have to worry about any injuries? Babe, just give me one more season. I, I went into camp with that starter. You know I had that heel thing, but I wouldn't complain about it to the trainers. Just let me do this. Don't you worry about your neck being Where's vulnerable? the belief? We're supposed to be in a partnership. When I took my vows, I looked into your eyes. I took an oath. <laughs> I took an oath. You can't win. You've seen him. You know how strong You're he is. You're just like the rest of them. You're always doubting me. Get My mother was right. Oh, no, oh. it's escalating. You know what? You look just like her right now. You're acting just like your mother. Just stop it, Michael. Just stop it. No. You're being ugly. You get that stubbornness from your dad. You know what? I'm going to meet up Peter for drinks. I'm out of here. Fine, go. Go drown your sorrows in your cheap beer and your your ugly friends. And tell you what, I'm not going to therapy. I'm not. Therapy is not happening. Sorry. You need to work on you. you There's need... one person pulling the rope for this family right here, and it's Mike Glennon. Jessica Smetana, limited fake ragtime person. Back in my be. day, they had CDs at Barnes and Noble. They don't anymore. They might. They might still actually. I'm Was that you. a ragtimey performer there? <laughs> hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my ragtime girl. Amino Hassan, limited fake Jack Palance. Gabriel Cash, how many millions? How many millions have you walked away with, Chris Whittingham? Your third eye is so closed. Your if you're Kevin, it, your palance is so bad. What? And hold oh, on. Yeah, Ray really Tango. He waltzes in. You sound like me now. And Hassan. takes all my drugs. <laughs> Tango and cash. Gabriel Cash. <laughs> how, many, how many millions? How many millions have you walked away with? Ray Tango. I love it. He waltzes in and takes all my drugs. And then he tangos out. <laughs> Mike Ryan, limited fake Jack Palance. You. I'm a number one. Oh, <laughs> I'm horrified. Chris Cody, limited fake Jeremy Shap. Live from the Belmont Stakes, I'm Jeremy Shap, ESPN. <laughs> Chris Cody, limited fake Lauren Michaels. Success. I make funny things. It's what I do. Well, do you make them or do other people make them? You just slap your name on it. <laughs> I've done enough. I, I let other people shine. I just, you know, give them a platform. Mike Ryan, limited fake Jason Witten, trying to get out of bed in the morning. Oh, God. Why? Why? <laughs> oh! Oh, 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 he has God. stood up. Oh, <laughs> oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> it's, I believe this to be the funniest thing we've ever done. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet Jesus. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this, is, this is still him pacing around the bed before, before button hook time. <laughs> 
That's just a sound that comes from him <laughs> rubbing his rubbing eyes. Rubbing his eyes. Yes, I was going to I was going to help you there. He's now rubbing the sleep from his eyes. It comes it's not green, it's orange and rusty crust. It just it just closes over his eyes in a way that doesn't allow him to see in the morning. What would you do? You cleared out the route before yeah. you before you ran it? I you just sort of stepping on a toy that my kid left on the floor, but that would be too difficult to convey without a full body shot. So right. we are now in the bathroom. That would have been good though. What would that have sounded like if we had been treated to that? without the visual accompaniment. Oh, God! Taylor! <laughs> Taylor! Is it a Lego? God damn it! <laughs> Taylor! God damn it, for sure. Uh, sorry, Lord. <laughs> All right, I'm Here. about to flip on the light. Oh! Searing light, oh. Lord! <laughs> oh, sorry well, again! Not. Chris Whittingham, limited fake Pablo Tori, talking while smiling. Pablo leads all of podcasting in reading while smiling. Coming up next, I'm going to tell you about the Savannah <laughs> Banana. Mike Ryan, limited fake Pablo Tori, as Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. I use antlers in all of my decorating. I do want to see uh, Pablo. And every last inch of me is covered in hair. Yeah. I'm especially good at extemporating. <laughs> Chris Whittingham, limited fake UM Baseball Stadium announcer, Jay Rokich. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not have a particular emotional connection to Dwayne Wade. When I was growing up as a sports fan, I really didn't feel the way about Dwayne Wade like I did about LeBron James. <laughs> I guess you have to be there, but that is such a good impression. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's yeah, yeah, pretty good. You say so. The yeah, yeah. problem with the impression is that nobody knows what we're talking about. Mike Ryan, limited fake Matthew McConaughey on Cinephobe. All right, all right, all right, all right, gentlemen. Listen, it's Matthew McConaughey month over here, and your boy Mike Ryan is ready to kick tires, light fires, and take all those green lights. Dan Lemetard, limited fake old-timey AM radio host. You remember Monty? <laughs> Monty was the greatest. He ran that swamp by the sea. And the hurricanes were fueled by cocaine. Chris Cody, limited fake cruise ship horn. Oh my God, that's that was a really good. One. good. That's, that's a good, good one. That was wow. good. That's a good one. Wait, do it fake, again. Do it again. Limited fake cruise ship horn. Mm. Oh, really <laughs> good. I'm really waving eating. to you. I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Shore, limited fake Stu Gatz's weekend observations. Dan. <laughs> Mike, Chris, Cody, <laughs> Greg, Cody, <laughs> Parakeet, Cortez. Oh no! Oh no! A storied franchise with a championship pedigree. Could they get back to the promised land? They'd have to take out the number one seed on the road in the murky swamps of South Florida. But to paraphrase the great Stu Gatz. Give me a team of Al Horfords and I'll win you the East. <laughs> and after seven mostly terrible basketball games, make no mistake about it. Celtics culture is back. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag Celtics culture. Celtics culture chatter. Hashtag Bob Ryan. Hashtag Hoblachuk. Jessica Smetana, limited fake Bane that turns into Sean Connery doing a Bane impression. You think the field is your friend? Yes. <laughs> yes. They were born in it, molded by it. It's the tundra here. Not the tundra. I don't and care. I sound like Sean Connery doing a Bane impression. <laughs> Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> Jessica Smetana, limited fake Bill Belichick on his daughter's wedding day. Yeah, very proud to see my daughter getting married wow. tonight. Wow, <laughs> Bill, why'd you re uh, why'd you release Cam? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, they're on to Seattle. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> on to Seattle, Miami, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're they're playing Miami playing opening the day of the Seattle season. Seattle of the South. <laughs> Chris Whittingham, limited fake UFC ring announcer, Bruce Buffer. Fighting in the blue corner! Fighting! 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fighting Rick the Ginger with the intent <laughs> to injure Fiber. I introduce to you limited fake Bruce Buffer. It is the time. <laughs> Fighting in the blue corner, Anthony, the Cuban pilot, Melania. <laughs> Chris Cody, limited fake Iceland coach from D2 Mighty Ducks. The goalie. What? What was that? The Iceland coach from Mighty Ducks. Oh, oh my oh, God! I've never seen Mighty, Mighty Ducks. Ducks. Let's go <laughs> shake their hands. <laughs> Chris Cody, limited fake Doc Rivers during sex. Pre-season. What does that sound like during sex? Sorry, let's move hmm. on. I'm sorry. Sorry for going there. Oh, all right. Sorry. Just... <laughs> <laughs> now we got our title, Doc Doc during sex. <laughs> That's good. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Gill, limited fake singing like a canary. This canary is in, in I, I don't think that this is a happy canary. This canary is in a cage. I think this canary Help! Get me out of here! We don't know. Help! Help me! Help! I'm being tortured. Just off screen cage. as a police interrogator making the canary sing. <laughs> the water's fake! It's just a green screen! <laughs> Jessica Smetana, limited fake 1980s and 1920s newscaster. And now acid rain! <laughs> What was that impersonation? I am an 1980s newscaster <laughs> reporting on climate change. That's... It is very cold. We are entering a new ice age, and now we have acid rain. You sounded like you were 1920s, though. You made the 1980s no, this sound is like 1920s. the 19... And now we're right on the banks, and it's, it's the like voice. Great Depression. It's the same, it's the same voice. Yeah. yeah. It's same more voice. twangy, though. <laughs> feels the same to me. Why are you making the 1980s the 1920s? Well, because the 1980s to her is the 1920s to <laughs> us. <laughs> us. <laughs> Amin El Hassan's limited fake Doc Rivers. Amin El Hassan, he's, this is a great, I don't understand this Nick Wright. I, I don't get it. Uh, you guys keep saying the thing, but people believe in Amin. I believe in Amin, and he's going to continue to bring this on. Amin El Hassan's limited fake Obama. Last night uh, was Michelle, Sasha, Malia. And uh, I, I said to them, uh, this Nick Wright guy, uh, I don't like him. I don't know what it is, but I can't I quite I put my thumb on it. Now, now, Governor Romney likes him. Governor Romney wants Nick Wright to steal all the ideas. But I believe in the sanctity of intellectual copyright. And uh, Mitch McConnell... <laughs> 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 Mitch McConnell does not share that belief, so Nick Wright. <laughs> I, wait, what was that? Amin El Hassan's limited fake Stephen A. Smith. Nick Wright is a very, very talented sportscaster. Wow, I, I do. I, I really do. I, I enjoy his work. But then I saw he ripped off the Amino Hassan MVP ball, and I was disgusted. I was beside myself. How dare you? In good conscience. <laughs> The temerity, the unmitigated gall. <laughs> Amin El Hassan's limited fake Mike Greenberg. Now, this is just my opinion. <laughs> now, I don't know anything. I, I, I haven't seen anything. I've never heard the bit. I've never heard the segment. I don't know anything. I just showed up here. This is just my opinion. But it would seem to me there's a lot of similarities between what Nick Wright did, posted and uh, what Amin El Hassan and Zach Harper have been doing for years on the radio. Amin El Hassan's limited fake DMX. <laughs> you know! <laughs> When a dog got to fight, the dog going to bite. <laughs> and Nick Wright, <laughs> this dog ain't right. <laughs> Jessica Smetana, limited fake Jimbo Fisher. Why wouldn't you want to come to Texas A&M? We're watching the game, coach. We're watching that daggone national championship game, sitting here with all my coaches' staff, and we're sitting up here. I don't like what I'm seeing with that nickel package, coach. Coach, it looks like they're going to run a blitz on this play, Coach, and it's third and nine. I'd give the running back the ball right there. That's a good game plan from you, Coach. <laughs> Have you ever heard me talk before, Dan? <laughs> I got some, like, I got like a little high pitch thing with a southern accent, and then I kind of sound like Bill Belichick a little bit sometimes because I don't talk in like a full sentence. I make some pauses here and there. Would you we're do gonna me? We're going to down to A&M. We're going to win the next <laughs> national championship. We look forward to seeing you at Kyle Field, Lane, yeah. October 29th. <laughs> you're, 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 it seems like you're leaking confidence on the impersonation because you're respecting the coach too much. That's our limited fake. What do you mean, impersonation? That's our Dan Levitard? Limited... Let me tell you something, Dan Levitard. You're going to talk to Lane Kiffin about me. I'm going to come in here and get in on this conversation, daggummit. 
that comment, this air conditioner's on the fritz. <laughs> Chris Cody, limited, fake, Harry Carey, and Elvis Presley. The giving a great acting performance, in my opinion. And, she hits it out of the but, park. <laughs> there you go. Uh, who, that's Harry Carey is who that is? <laughs> it's Will Ferrell doing Harry Carey. And Elvis what? occasionally. Look and then, out now. <laughs> He's workshopping off of it. Oh, what, everybody? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, but the lips and the head is important. Like you got to make your neck longer and be like, oh. <laughs> but wait a minute. You you seem yeah. like a surprise. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> you got to tune in to find out. Oh, come Elvis. On. Breaking down Elvis. Walk out. Look out now. <laughs> Just Jack White doing Elvis and Dewey Cox. <laughs> <laughs> It's only you just breathing. It's all you need. <laughs> it's also Harry Carey. What do you think about that?